Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'll be sharing my top tips for cycle touring in France and a few things that you should know before you go bikepacking in France. France is a big country and there are some pretty long distances between the towns. So keep this in mind if you are cycle touring and you need to carry your own supplies. There can be up to 50 kilometers distance between some of the major towns so it's a good idea to carry enough food and water for at least a day if you plan on cycle touring. Some of the supermarkets will be closed on Sunday. A lot of shops do close on Sundays in France with the exception of the main cities. You will still be able to get supplies if you are in Paris but uh, in some of the smaller towns you'll find that the supermarkets will be closed on Sundays and some of the other shops as well. If you do get stuck there will likely be a convenience store or something open on a Sunday. It's not always easy to find water when you're riding in France. You may have to ask somebody to fill your water bottle. Most of the people you encounter are more than happy to refill your water bottle, especially if you speak some French. So do go ahead and learn enough French to get by. It's not terribly difficult. Learning the basic greetings, please and thank you, will help you to get by tremendously in France. French is a language that is widely spoken throughout the world and there is some expectation that you will know enough French just to ask for things, say please and thank you. You will find it a lot easier to get by just by learning a few basic phrases. If you plan on camping on your cycle adventure, you'll find a wide variety of campsites available in France. There are a few differences between the campsites in France and campsites elsewhere. They will charge you separately for each individual part of your stay. For instance, they'll charge you for the site, they'll charge you for power extra, they'll charge you uh, per person fee, uh, they'll charge you if you come with a car or with a bicycle, sometimes they'll add like a one euro charge or something like that. So do bear this in mind. There are plenty of different kinds of campsites in France and you will notice that some of them are more resort orientated like for families. Those ones will generally have swimming pools and uh, other entertainment type things on site. They will be more expensive than ones that are catered to traveling people, uh, bike tourists and stuff like that. The way to tell the difference is if, if you see that it's got loads of amenities and it's got swimming pools and various things, it may not be the right camping for you. I have stayed in a bunch of those because they were the only ones close by, but you will pay a lot more, probably more than 20 euros a night. If you look for Camping Municipal, they're often half the price of the resort camping. So you can stay in a Camping Municipal uh, for maybe 10 euros to 15 euros, whereas the resort campings might charge you 20 to 30 euros for the night. I have stayed in some very nice Camping Municipal as well, and uh, one of them even had its own beach and swimming pool and, and various other things attached. So you'll just have to shop around, but there's plenty of places to stay in campsites in France. Another thing to mention with the campsites in France is they will close for the season. So once you get into the end of October, uh, most of the campsites will start to close down uh, November, December, and when, whenever there's snow on the ground, that some of them will close. In some of the larger areas and places with more tourism, the campsites might stay open. But yeah, do be aware if you're, if you're somewhere out of the way, you may encounter that the campsites do close. If you plan on wild camping, you will find that there is a lot of opportunity for wild camping in France. And the main reason for this is there's just a lack of fencing between properties. You'll find that there's like big open spaces in the countryside that you can just walk onto a field and, and pitch there. I mean, obviously that's private property, so just use discretion there. And if you see the farmer, maybe you could ask permission. Um, but there's plenty of places to camp where you can just sort of wander onto the land and pitch your tent for the night and then 
you know, if you're gone in the morning, no one will even know you were there. Just another thing to add with regard to wild camping, and if you do go onto some of the farms and private property, be very aware that there could be hunting at different times of the year. It's very popular there to hunt pheasant and things like that with shotguns, so you will hear a lot of gunshots, and just make sure that you're safe and you're not camping somewhere where there's a lot of hunting going on. And the other thing to note with regard to wild camping in the fields is harvesting at uh, different times of year. Yeah, be aware because they do have big machines out there working in the fields. Do be aware of animals. You will find that there are a lot of deer. There are also wild pigs that I've encountered. Um, don't worry too much about these animals disturbing you. They're probably more frightened uh, of you than, than you are of them. And uh, as always, beware of ticks. If you do see deer, then there's likely to be ticks around as well. There are plenty of hotels available in France, and you'll find that they're more affordable than places like the Netherlands and the UK. So if you've come from the north or if you've come across from the, from the UK, you'll find that you can stay in a hotel in France for a pretty reasonable price if you need to. And they do have a lot of hotels alongside the highways that don't actually have a concierge or reception. You can just go in and swipe your credit card at a machine. It'll print you out a little code for the room and tell you which room number to go to. And those uh, hotels can be quite good and some of them not so good. Now I will mention Hotel F1 is one that you'll find in France by a lot of motorways. It's one of the cheapest hotels and uh, it has a reputation for being uh, one of the cheapest. It's not, it's not perhaps the nicest, but if you get in a pinch, you might be able to get a room there for 50 euros or so. Do shop around because there's plenty of competition for hotels and I've previously picked up hotel rooms in France for as little as 35 euros. The food in France is extremely good and it doesn't matter if you're on a tight budget or you have a lot of money to spend on food, you're going to find something great to eat. And one of the things that France is very famous for is its bread. I would recommend getting up early if you want to get the freshest bread and go with the locals down to the local bakery or boulangerie. You'll find the most delicious bread you've ever tasted. And it's not super expensive, but make sure you do get up early because if you go later in the day, you might find that they're all sold out. If you're on a really tight budget, then don't worry, you can always visit the supermarkets. They also have very nice baked goods, amongst other things, and you can get a French bread or baguette for as little as 35 cents at somewhere like Aldi or Lidl. So I would really recommend doing that, but as well, with the supermarkets, make sure you get up early because you might find that they're sold out later in the day. Another thing that France is famous for is its alcohol, especially wine. You'll find a lot of wine in different regions of uh, France and some of it is really inexpensive. You can pick up a bottle of wine for about one or two euros sometimes. It might not be the best quality, but if you're from another part of the world where perhaps you don't have uh, that much wine production, you will be uh, amazed at um, how, how decent quality the wine is. In the different regions, they are always famous for, for a different um, type of wine. And if you're in Normandy, the famous thing to drink there is of course the cider. It's very good and again, you can buy it for one or two euros a bottle. I guess the more you spend, the better quality you're going to get. Also, the beer in France is very good and relatively inexpensive as well. If you do go to a supermarket to buy your beer, you'll be able to pick it up for about 30 to 50 cents for a can or bottle of beer. France can be very hot during the summer. In this previous season where I just cycled through France, they had a huge heat wave and we were experiencing temperatures of up to 40 degrees in the summer. So do prepare for that. It can be uh, very hot and make sure that you carry sunscreen so you don't get sunburned and enough water to drink. Because again, with regard to the distances between towns, you might not have anywhere to fill up your water bottle. So do, do prepare for that, prepare for the heat. There are a few strange uh, things that you will only find in France. 
I don't think this would be a complete no before you go video if I didn't mention the interesting plumbing. It seems to be only in France that I've really discovered this. There will be the toilet but there will be no seat um, and also no toilet paper. You can find this in campsites and also in some hotels where there's a shared bathroom especially. You, you can also find this. <laughs> it's something fun that you might encounter on your travels. France has some great cycle infrastructure, but it's not all linked together. So if you have cycled through the Netherlands and Belgium and you've come from the north into France, you will notice that the cycle infrastructure can just stop at times and you'll be cycling on the road. Don't worry about that. You will um, find some really great cycleways within France. French drivers are very considerate of cyclists. They tend to um, pass bicycles very safely on the road. They give you enough space. Even in Paris, where the traffic is pretty crazy, it seems that bikes have just as much right to be on the road as any other uh, road user in France. So that's something you will encounter and it's, um, it's part of the culture there in France. France is a great place to ride a bicycle and I really enjoy it. Each time I've been in France, I've discovered something new and I've enjoyed riding there a, a lot. And I hope you enjoy it as much as, as I have. If you've got any questions or comments, please leave them down below. If this video has been useful to you, please consider subscribing or join the channel for just $1 a month. Any support is greatly appreciated. My name's Andy, you've been watching Hobo Cyclist, and I'll see you in the next episode.